Lisa Cook, Senior Director, Career Services. I met Dania Thomas at an academic residency in Atlanta, Georgia, and I was so pleased to hear her share her career success story. She persistently applied numerous times to land her dream job, and she succeeded. She is now a lead microbiologist at the Center for Disease Control. She is also a PhD in public health epidemiology student here at Walden. She now shares her career story with us. My name is Dania Thomas and I am in public health um, with epidemiology track. I'm in the PhD program. Well, I'm the one of the lead microbiologists right now um, at the CDC. I'm an ARISE fellow, so I'm doing a fellowship with them right now. Okay, well, I have to say the biggest challenge getting this position that I have right now is experience. Before I didn't have the experience, um, I was doing research a little bit on, in undergrad, but it still wasn't enough to get the position that I have right now. As a matter of fact, it took me at least three to five years to even get this position. In my situation, I didn't know anybody that worked at the CDC, especially in a position such as the one that I have right now. So what I started doing was doing volunteer work. Um, in addition, I was putting, I was putting in massive amount of hours in applications and I started talking to other people and they said to play on your strengths because in, originally I wanted to do public health because of course that's what I'm studying right now so I kept applying to public health type jobs. That wasn't working out so until somebody said play on your strengths because you have a biology degree, you've worked in labs and you've done research work, you should go that route. So I started doing volunteer work at different places. Um, I also started doing more research work and I also started doing some more work on my own. Also, I, in the midst of me trying to get the position that I have now, I had a specific microbiology job for a short time. And at first I didn't even want to do the job, but as my mother and my grandmother would say, um, especially my aunt, I can hear her in my head right now, it doesn't matter, whatever you do, even if it's for 10 days, even if it's for 10 minutes, it, it will amount to something. It's more experience than you had 10 minutes ago. So I took the job, it was about like three, four months learning you know, how to do their specimens, excuse me, <clears throat> learning how to do plating, inoculation, stuff like that. So because just because of that part alone and in research, I was able to get this job. When I initially applied for the job, I didn't even get the job and it was a month later that they offered me the job. I kept complaining, I've had many days where I would cry, nothing is working out for me, and I know that there are people out there that can understand exactly what I'm saying. You put in three, four, five different applications at a time that you, especially for a job that you know you're qualified for, and don't even get a call. But um, even when I talked to Miss Lisa Cook, she was even saying to go with what you know. You know, like for example, like I said, I spoke about earlier, um, I'm, I have a background in science and research. Instead of going the public health way, since you're just in the program, you know, focus on what you have. Focus on the stuff that you know. So I started applying to research jobs. I started applying to scientist jobs because I just figured that there was no way that if I wanted to do epidemiology, why am I here trying to apply for a science job? That's how I felt. But then the more I got into my program is the more I know that to me, epidemiology is almost like public health mixed with science. And um, it was, the career services definitely explained to me that with me having the research background and the science background, that makes me even a better candidate along with public health. And I've read so many books, I've written so many articles, and based on the articles and the books that I've read during this program, that's actually another reason why I was able to answer all the questions when I was in my, when my, I was in my interview. So I was able to talk about populations, I was able to talk about you know, what, what goes on in that specific population, all of that I learned from Walden University. And that's definitely one thing I enjoy about being here. And Career Service, by the way, you guys are awesome. Um, because you guys just kept encouraging me, you kept telling me, it's okay, this can be done. I mean, I even at, called and even asked, like, what else do I do, you know? And just the support that I've gotten apart from my family and God, just, the support I get from Walden and Career Services is wonderful. I would tell anybody to come to Walden. It's the best career move I've ever made in my life, and I mean that. I kept going. I didn't get deterred by anything or anybody. I've heard people that say, well, why don't you just do something else, or why don't you, you're getting too old, especially since I have two beautiful children. Um, I know that there are a lot of people out there 
that have gone through stuff and are going through things. There are people out there who are single mothers. There are people out there who have lost jobs. But I'm telling you, I'm here as a testimony to say that all things will happen. It will happen in due time. You have to believe in yourself. You have to make sure you do the work. You have to promote yourself because trust me, three years ago, if somebody told me that I would be sitting here, sitting right here, even talking about this, I would call them a liar. You have to be passionate. You have, to, in order for people to believe in you, you have to believe in yourself. What I'm most passionate about is helping people. That's that. If anybody knows me, anybody knows the type of person that I am, my personality, I will take the shirt off my back for people. I am just like the women in my family. That's exactly how we are. And because of that, I knew that I wanted to do something that would help people. Even if it wasn't directly helping people, becoming a medical um, doctor, but I wanted to do something behind the scenes, which hence the reason I'm doing this public health right now. In the current position that I'm doing, we're actually looking at um, gonorrhea to see if there is a medication that they can come up with that would inhibit the growth. You know, so because of that, I'm helping a specific population in West Africa. If this is the field that you want to be in, you have to be passionate about it. And in order to be passionate about something, you have to know about it. So take the time, even if it's a year, two years, three years, or in my situation, five years. Because right now, I'm not even directly a public health analyst. I, I do public health microbiology work. That's a start. That's a stepping stone. And you learn what you can, and you foster it. And then once you get to that point, at least you will completely know that you are official and it will be great. It's the, it's the best feeling because when I got because when I got this job, it was the best feeling ever. I promise. Thanks, Walden.